Well, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Jay Bird back again with another episode of Above the Clouds. And uh, this today, I was really excited about the guest that wanted to join with me today. Um, he's not only somebody that I've known since the ninth grade, he's actually somebody that I've seen struggle. And then I've also seen, don't even know what the word struggle is anymore. So um, this is really cool. It's really inspiring to hear his story to see where he's came from, to physically know him, to physically have been in class and understand who he is, his intentions, him as a father. I see what he does um, for his kids or he only has one kid, but what I see what he does for his kid. Uh, only one kid that he knows of. Um, not just joking, but, um, you know, more than anything, he is a very successful wholesaler house flipper. He's in real estate. And uh, without further ado, I got to bring on my boy. Dustin Ring. Thank what you, up, sir, Howard? for having me, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, I feel honored and privileged to be here talking to you. Man, you're uh, your you're second guest. So this the only person that uh, I'm not going to say that the order of like the guest precedent one of the other. But, you know, more than anything, I wanted to get in here of really what people wanted to talk about. And that's um real shit, bro. You know what I mean? Nobody wants to hear the fluff. Nobody wants to hear the fake. And um, you're somebody that I respect enough that I've seen do it, you know, so like um, there's a lot of bullshit people out there that are, I would say, Internet talkers, you know, and they talk a really good talk and you can you can believe them to an extent. But then when you have the receipts and the proof of the pudding behind it, you know, like um, like yourself, when you post it on the Internet, you're not fucking posting fluff. You're posting something that it's taken four five, six years for you to develop and be where you are today. So when people see you posting those today, opposed to, you know, when you were making $35,000 a year, you were just making $35,000 a year, four or five years ago. Right. Tell us how you're not doing that anymore. And, and what kind of drove you into that? Like, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you are and, and why you do it. Yeah, well, I'll say first off, what you're saying is there's a lot of gurus out there um, that basically and that will tell you to do all these certain things that they aren't actually doing themselves. Um, they maybe they have more luck than I do selling courses and stuff. Maybe they found something that works, but most of them are full of shit. You know, most of them haven't gone through the grind. Most of them haven't built it from from nothing, started from scratch. Um, and that's kind of, you know, where I feel like I I came from. I'm not necessarily saying that I came from some shitty background or had some terrible childhood because I didn't, you know, um, uh, we, we weren't blessed with money or anything, but, you know, my parents tried their best to give me a good childhood, but, you know, ultimately, um, you know, they, they didn't leave me with anything. Um, it was basically join the military or, you know, you can't stay here, you, you know, basically it was like, you got to get out. And so, you know, I right out of I dropped out of high school um, March of my senior year with a 0.7 GPA. I couldn't stop skipping school. I was just so checked out. You know, I think I think we're a like we we don't like um, I never liked school. I don't know about you, but I hated school. Um, I hated being there. Um, I would just daydream all day about what um, what I wanted in life. And it's crazy because when I, when I think about that now, it just brings back core memories core memory unlocked, right? Like I remember when I was on the wrestling team and we would, we would be doing sprints and like at the end of practice and I would just be so gassed and, and bit, you know, just irritable. Like I'm ready for this to be over with. But one of the things that would keep me going was I would always imagine myself like with a house on the beach. I don't have that, but that was just like, I was at a very early age, I was already thinking things that I wanted. And as time progressed, you know, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, that like, it became not a reality anymore. You know, I ended up getting a, I worked in retail for a long time. And um, first off, I'll, I'll say this. I had many name tags and hairnets. It's from Wayne's world, by the way, but basically I had a lot of jobs and I got fired from a lot of them. I quit a lot of them. Most of the time I just, I don't feel like going to work today. I quit, you know, whatever. I don't want to go to McAllister's deli today. Um, but finally I ended up finding a job in retail management and did that for about five years and realize that, you know, if I die tomorrow, there's going to be a new manager in place. And, you know, and, and it continued to be that way. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I need to go to school and get my degree, right? I hated school, but I went to school and got a two-year degree in computer uh, computer science and 
doing what I thought was right, what everyone tells you to do, you need to go to college, you need to get your education, which I'm, I'm sorry, in 2024, there is not a bigger lie that's being told right now than you need to go to school and get your education. I mean, if that's something you want to do, you want to go be a doctor or, or, or a nurse or a, you know, a veterinarian or whatever that requires that education, by all means, you know, that's what you need to do. And that's what I thought I needed to do. And maybe it was what I needed to do at that time. Um, but it basically it landed me a $30,000 a year job fixing computers uh, for a school system. And so I was there for about uh, three years and rewind, just got divorced. Um, so I'm, I'm completely miserable. I'm living in a small apartment. Um, I have no money. I'm paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, I'm paying child support. And I'm paying a car payment. And I'm paying Internet, whatever the, the necessities that I feel like I had to have Internet, you know. Um, but like literally I had a couch in my apartment that was my mother's that I inherited. I had a box spring and a mattress on the floor and a little 27 inch TV that I could play my Xbox on in the, in the meantime. And I had a computer and that was basically it. Paper cups and plastic forks, you know, you name it. And so I ended up getting, I ended up having to move back in with my dad at the age of 32, maybe 33, however old I was, 31. And had to stay there for uh, about seven months and really save no money. All it did was make me more miserable, more bitter. Um, and I ended up finding another apartment here in town and, uh, where I live now. And what's crazy is the landlord that gave me that apartment, gave me a copy of a book called rich dad, poor dad. And if you've never heard of that book, or if you've never read it, I, I definitely advise you to, I'll, I, I actually read this one. I audible most books, you know, I'm not a good reader. I'm not very smart. Um, I, I won't say that I have this high um, intelligence level. I just kind of find what what works for me and what what continues to work with me and just kind of follow that path. But um, and I would say, you know, you don't have like most people that have these college degrees and stuff, they, they get caught in that rat race and like they, they just stay there. And, they're, and I feel like those are the miserable people a lot of the times. And, and the people like me and you where maybe school wasn't our best, um, our, our, our best attribute. We're, we're action takers. We can get on the phone. We can call a stranger. We can strike up a conversation like that. And, and, you know, even if we feel uncomfortable about something, we have we can push through that. And it doesn't just happen overnight, you know. But back to what I was saying, I moved out of my dad's house. My landlord gave me rich dad, poor dad. I read it and it was basically stating that, hey, you need to get out of that nine to five grind. Um, because what happens when you retire? What you're going to live off your retirement and you know and stuff like that? Like that's not the that, you're put on this earth to live that way. I'm already paycheck to paycheck. So then when you retire and you're supposed to enjoy your life, you're still going to be paycheck to paycheck. I'm renting a duplex right now that I'm living in, two bed, one bath on a terrible side of town. And I had basically before I read that book, I had basically just chalked it up. I had a new job at this point. I was fixing copiers, making a little bit more money. Uh, I went from making 30K to like 36K, something like that, and um, which made no difference. Um, and so I was like, man, you know, I don't want my son growing up looking at I would love to be his hero. I would love to be someone he looked up to. But right now I can't even look up to myself. I can't even it's, it's hard for me to see that person in the mirror uh, doing what I'm doing, just, you know, I don't want to be the copier repair man, you know. Yeah, I remember being on the bus back in the day, but who's your dad? I'm like, my dad's the ultimate warrior, or my dad's Hulk Hogan, or whatever. We make up all this bullshit about who our dads were. Like, um, and you know, I want my son to be able to look at me and go, Well, my dad's a you know, a this, this, and this, and be able to proudly say it. But at, at that time, I could not, I didn't, I was embarrassed of my own self. I didn't even want to tell people what I did for a living. You know, what you fix printers for a living? Wow, man, you know, you're really crushing it. Um, and completely bitter, bitter, miserable mindset. Um, if someone had something more than I did, I was, uh, you're lucky, you're spoon fed, it was inherited, um, you know, whatever. I, I would make up some excuse in my head where they had that for a reason. And, you know, I'm just, I'm getting the shaft, you know, God's just constantly putting a rain cloud over my head. I have bad luck, you know, when's my break, you know? Um, and so moving into that duplex, on Hollywood Boulevard, where I live, it's literally where it is, um, in the hood. And if I would have not moved into that little duplex in the hood, and my landlord would not have given me that book, I probably wouldn't be talking to you right now. Um, so everything does happen for a reason, but you do have to take action. You can't just sit on your hands. So read the book, got through it, was like, all right, man, 
this is great information. I've realized that I don't need to work for the man my whole life. I need to figure a way to get out of this and, and essentially invest in real estate, which is that's what that book really teaches us and to invest. Was that was that when you started making those massive action videos? Because you yeah, started making some videos from your car driving about making yeah. massive action. That's crazy. You remember that, but that was over five years ago. And um, bro, I can remember it like it was yesterday because you turned the phone around in your hand and you're like, Hey, it's dust. And, and, and I can, so I saw that something clicked for you. Yeah. There was something that clicked right then and there. And like, all right, can you please, this is, I think this is undervalued for a lot of people, but I think 90 fucking percent of people are in this position right now. They hate where they're at, bro. Right. They hate where um, they're at. How can you yeah. how can you take them through that mindset of where you're like, you know what? I'm not fucking going backwards. I'm only going forwards and I'm taking this massive action. Can you walk us through that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So read the book, um, ended up showing up to a real estate meeting. But so I read that book and I started following more like, you know, Grant Cardone was one of the big ones. And I know he gets a lot of hate. You know, most successful people get hate. Uh, they call them scammers or whatever. But I started, I found this one video on YouTube. If you just YouTube Grant Cardone motivation, um, it's just basically a, a, a 20 minute mashup of just things he said over the last few decades and just really good, like make you feel good. Like I'm going to go make a million dollars tomorrow. Like I'm making 30 K right now, but I'm going to make 30 K tomorrow and one day, whatever. He just fired you up, give you goosebumps. Like I still listen to it almost every week and I've probably heard it over a hundred times. Um, but it was it was starting to listen to that. And that's what started to click. Like I started getting tired of my own bullshit. Like, OK, the reason I'm in this situation right now is because of me. It's not because I got a bad deal of cards. It's not because someone um, took advantage of me. It's not because of the way I was brought up. Um, you know, it, it's 100 percent because of me. The reason I'm divorced is because of me. The reason I'm living in this duplex is because of me. The reason I'm not making any money is because of me. The reason that I, I'm at a dead end job is because of me. And the reason I hate my life is because of me. All of it, you know, and that it was that accountability part when I had to go, OK, I'm it's my fault. I'm I'm the idiot. I'm I, and once I realized that I had to take accountability for my actions instead of pitying myself and feeling sorry for myself and blaming God for things or whatever, that was when it clicked. And then I showed up to a real estate meeting um, about a month later because I remember I called my landlord and I was like, bro, you gave me this book, but I have no money. What am I going to invest in? You know, I, I'm paycheck to paycheck. My overdraft fees are covering, you know, my my new paychecks covering overdraft fees where I'm negative in my account. I'm barely just making it month to month. And um, that's when he said, OK, Dustin, I uh, show up to this meeting and I showed up to this meeting. And I learned about something called wholesaling real estate. And once I started diving into real estate, it just kind of opened up the algorithm for me, maybe on YouTube. And this is back in 2019 where algorithms really weren't such a strong thing. You really had to go search for something in order for it to, to pop up. I mean, but um, I started just obsessing with it and I obsessed with this wholesale thing, which would basically gave me the ability to buy and sell real estate with having no money because I didn't have any money. Um, and that was when the floodgates opened. And, uh, you know, it's funny you say you see those videos. I always like to check my Facebook memories, you know, see where I was, um, you know, in 2022, 20, 21, you know, 2020. What was I saying? Where was I? And sometimes those videos will pop up and man, are they cringe. Um, they are so cringe. I am goofy, all excited. And that's the way you should be at first. I mean, I felt like finally for the first time I was high on life a little bit. And I've heard that you've probably heard the term before. You're firing on all cylinders now. You didn't even though I fuck, made, bro. Yeah, I didn't have any money. I was still broke as fuck. Didn't have any money. Haven't done any deals yet. And I'm firing on all cylinders. I am so motivated. I am, you know, 110 percent on everything. And I'm just I'm having fun because I can feel my mind shift. No longer am I, you know, judging, you know, fat people walking down the street or, you know, muttering stuff under my breath or, or being bitter and jealous of people. I'm, I'm focusing on everything that's positive and I'm seeing a positive shift. And um, that's really when it when that's that how works. It yeah. I mean, you know how it is, man. You, you have a bad day and you just you see people like, oh, God, take care of yourself or God, Lee, what the hell? You know, whatever, <sighs> you know, you judge. And I was very judgmental. And, and the only person I should have been judging at that point was myself. 
Um, but that just goes to mindset, you know, I was bitter or miserable. So getting out of that rut and staying out of that rut was, um, that was the turning point. You know, I was, I wasn't out of the rut yet, but I was, I was clawing and scratching trying to make my way, you know, I was figuring it out. Dude, I seen it, man. And I, I watched it firsthand because it was just, you know, like, the turning point of when you got your first deal. I think if I remember this correctly, we have not had any prior conversations to this right now, but if I remember correctly, it was probably what around like 2,500 bucks you made off your it, first deal. It was a little tiny little piece deal, like just a little bit like, well, for me, that was making 2,500 bucks a month. Closing to a one day. deal. Yeah. And oh my gosh, I just got 2,500 bucks. I'm not negative in my account anymore. I can go out to eat tonight, you know, like, holy crap, you know, it, that breath of that relief, like I can breathe again. Okay. I did it. I can't believe I did it because my first five deals fell through. You know, I would, I would get these deals under contract. And for people that don't know what wholesaling is, like I've said, it's basically buying and selling real estate without ever owning the real estate. You're, you're a middleman. So say Suzanne um, has an old fixer upper house that she only wants 50 K for 50,000. But I know uh, an investor that would pay 60000 for it. Essentially, all I do is sign a contract with Suzanne for 50 and sell that piece of paper to an investor, uh, excuse me, for 50 and sell that piece of paper uh, for 60. And I just take the 10 grand in the middle. Um, and so that's what I did with that deal is I just found this little mobile home and um, they didn't want it anymore. And I made an offer. Of course, I can't buy anything. I've already had five deals fall through. And at this point, I'm going, well, shit, this is just another failure. You're a failure, Dustin, basically starting to get unmotivated. But I, I pushed through and all it took was for that one deal to close to just open the gates. And, you know, I closed that one for twenty five hundred. And then about two weeks later, I closed one for seven grand. So seven, eight, nine, ninety five hundred bucks. I've already made a quarter of my year salary. Um, in just a few months. And then I closed uh, one about uh, two or three weeks later and I made 15 grand. Here I am. I've almost made my whole entire year salary in about three months. And that was, that was when I, after that deal closed, I put my two weeks in at my job. And I remember, <laughs> them, I remember them telling me, he's like, man, I thought you were really going to go somewhere with this company. Meanwhile, you can tell his blood pressure is through the roof. He's super unhealthy, stress, his phone is ringing 20 times while we're just sitting there in the meeting, people calling him with problems. And I'm going, bro, I don't want what you have. And I want to be able to create something on my own and have that true freedom. Like if I don't want to go do anything tomorrow, I have that ability to do that, which I don't have to ask anybody for time off. I don't have to, you know, I'm not going to lose money. It just, I don't know. It's, it's, and, and obviously five years I started. Sorry. Obviously timing. No, you're good. Obviously timing was like a, a, a huge thing for you too, because you got in at a good time. I feel like, but like, when do you feel like you hit your stride? Like, when do you feel like, all right, you know what you're doing, but like, at, at what point did you hit your stride of being like, this is, you know, it became easy because obviously yeah. one of the biggest things that my mentor teaches me is you got to do your reps. So for sure. I'm, I'm comfortable talking on camera just because I've done reps over and over and yeah. over and over again. You know, we've, I've, I've talked on the telephones to hundreds of thousands of people, probably arguably if I've did 300 calls a day and I've talked on the telephone for 18 years, I've done quite a few fucking phone calls, you know? So like at and what point what did you, mm -hmm, what, where did you hit your stride? And because now you're spending $30,000 a month on fucking billboards, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what the fuck? I, I would say I hit my, I would say I hit my stride. And what, what you were saying about do your reps. I say that a lot too. Like you got to put in the reps. You want big, big arms. You want a big chest. You want a nice body. Like you can't just do one part of it. You can't just diet and not do it. You, you got to hit the gym every day, sometimes twice a day. And, and you got to, you got to put in the reps. You can't just go in there and work out one time and go, okay, well, I'm in great shape now. I can go to the beach or look the way I want I've hit my goals. You know, I've probably walked in, you know, I don't know how many thousands of houses. And my first year, I probably walked into 300 different houses and met 300 different strangers. And, you know, I would have, not, I wouldn't be good at what I'm doing unless I would have went through that brutal process of being told no 300 times or 250 times, whatever. And, and meeting these strangers, I would have never developed the skills that I, I need to, in order to hit my stride. You know, so many people want it to happen overnight, but they haven't even skilled up yet. Like they haven't even developed the tools that's going to require you to hit a stride. Um, 
And so I would say about right at the end of 2020, beginning of 2021 is when I really started um, to amp it up. And that's when I started investing more money in marketing and doing radio and doing billboards and doing TV and stuff like that. And, you know, one of the things that invigorated me that, and um, I've talked about this before, but I was, I was a realtor at one point. So I had, I started this wholesale thing and then I got licensed to sell real estate uh, like, you know, to regular people, not just investors, just sell them, help buyers buy houses, help sellers sell their house. And um, I ended up pretty much being kind of boycotted out of that whole organization um, where I'm at here in West Tennessee. And that really fueled me um, because here I was being very successful and I had a lot of people that had been in the business a lot longer than me that were less successful trying to control how successful I could become and hating on me and just, you know, that's when I dropped my license and I doubled down. I said, you know what? I'm going to buy as many billboards as I can get. I'm going to make sure I get on every radio station I can get. Uh, I'm going to start filming TV commercials and I'm going to drive. It, it was, at that part, it was principal, and it, but it worked. Um, I call it John Cena marketing, you know, um, back in 2010, I'm a wrestling. You can't fan. see me or see you in person now, right? <laughs> they see you well, everywhere. Right. Well, in, in that 2010 era, um, you know, wrestling's crap nowadays, but and it was still wasn't that time too, but there was this whole thing where like the WWE would drive John Cena down everybody's throat, right? Like to the point to where he's supposed to be a good butt guy, but everyone's booing the crap out of him but they're still driving them like he's a good guy and Hey, please cheer this guy. And so instead of people just saying John Cena, they started, started saying John seen enough. Um, and which means they were sick of him. But the thing was, you could go ask a person in the grocery store who's probably never watched wrestling. Do you know who John Cena is? And they would go, well, yeah, I know who John Cena is a wrestler. Right. And it's just that branding you have. He has literally been in your face so much whether it's billboards or a sign on a, on a light pole or on the TV or every time you turn on the radio or whatever, my strategy was to be in front of so many, as many people as I could possibly be in front of as often as possible. And that 2021 is what shifted the whole entire business. I started going from making, you know, um, I think 2020, I made like um, 120 grand. And then 2021, I think I did 220. And then 2022, I did 790. And then 2023, I almost hit seven figures. I was at like 980. Um, and then, well, this year I'm set to make more than last year. So it's just been this huge snowball effect. Congratulations. Not, bro. not that I'm bragging about, oh, thank you. No, not that no, I'm bragging no, about no, money, no, but no. it's just been this gradual increase. And if I would have stopped at any point, if I would have let off the gas, and there's been times where, I've, you know, had, you know, issues with my own personal life where I've let off the gas. Um, um, oh, for sure. But if I would have let off the gas completely, it would have gone away. You know, it, it's something that you just have to constantly keep pressing the pedal to the metal and not all the time. I mean, you need to take breaks and stuff like that. But that's that's what's given me the ability to do what I'm doing now. Now I'm not buying and selling houses with no money to people. I still do that. But now I'm able to have the ability. Uh, I own my own personal house. I've got a handful of rentals. I've got some storage units. I've got uh, I do fix and flips. I buy and I buy them, fix them up and then resell them. And so, you know, usually I'm making my old year salary in one single deal a couple times a month at this point. And, you know, it's just but it, it all started with that mind shift change that click moment, that aha moment that I got to stop hating on other people that got more than me, regardless if it was handed to them or they worked for it, regardless if you like them or whatever, you got to learn how not to be bitter and figure out your own issues and go, okay, I can do this for myself. Cause trust me guys, if I can do it with the 0.7 <laughs> GPA dropout my senior year, then fucking anybody can do this shit. And I think that's where most people they get the hang up like, OK, well, maybe you have the academics. Maybe you're a straight A student. Maybe you've got a four, six, eight year degree, but they lack the action part. And whereas us that maybe don't have all that education, we're just like, fuck it. Let's just go and see what happens. And 
those are the people that have success. They'll run into problems. They're not thinking, well, what if I run into this problem? Meet it head on. Figure it out when you get to that problem. Because you're going to have so many different questions and problems that you just sit on your hands. You know, the, the analysis, analysis paralysis, over analysis paralysis. You can read all the books you want. You can watch all the YouTube, follow all the gurus. They're not going to be able to, to, to make you take action and go out and walk out the front door and go do it. And that's what it takes. And, you know, as I learned more about wholesaling, especially in the beginning, I would just get through a chapter and I wouldn't even finish reading the book. I'm like, okay, I got to start implementing this right now. I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I at least want to start this right now. Um, and so and I think that's, that's huge, bro, because like, I think, let me ask you this, because I think one of the main things in the current market with what you're in right now for the people that are watching that are actually experienced in wholesaling that kind of follow you a little bit. You've created a name for yourself in your industry, in your area. You know what I mean? You've kind of created, you created massive action. You created the ripple effect. Your first two years probably sucked ass, but now it's probably becoming easier because of the relationships that you built and they saw that you were actually able to come through. So like, Absolutely. so like, let me ask you this to uh, dis not discourage anybody that's brand new to this. Is there still opportunity for wholesaling houses all over the country where we're at? 100%. Um, you know, even when I started and I started in 2019, which I will admit, yeah, was a better time to start. It wasn't oversaturated. Now real estate investing has almost become this fad, but um, which it really shouldn't be. It should be some, I mean, invest real estate's always been around. Um, it's not like investing in crypto or anything. Don't, don't piss anybody off. Um, but you know, um, that's risky. Um, and, but everything that you do, what you make money on is going to, there's going to be some risk in it. Um, but I would say, that right there, a lot of people go, well, it's too saturated now or there's just too many people and I, I started too late. It's that thought right there that crushes 99% of my competition out of the way that will never get started. And I don't have to worry about it because I know that that's their mindset. The people that become successful at it go, fuck it, earmuffs and blinders. I'm not going to listen to what anyone else says. I'm not going to pay attention to what anyone else is doing. I've got this one goal that I know I need to that I want to accomplish in order to be successful and I'm going to do it. And even if it doesn't happen in two or three, four or five, six months and you hit it on that seventh month, like, and see that it's possible, that's all you need. Like there's this one guy that says, you're just one deal away, one closing away. There's people that have been doing this for a year and never close a deal. Really no excuse in that something they're doing wrong, but that one deal, regardless, and I remember my first deal, I was like, I don't care if I have to pay money to close this deal. I just want to get through the process and say, hey, I actually did it. Um, and so making that 2,500 bucks was all the, that was everything I needed um, to invigorate me to, to keep going. That and probably gave you all the confidence. You couldn't have read a book that could have made that deal make more oh, yeah. sense of everything. Mm -mm. No, you couldn't have. Um, you could have probably read 100 more books and it wouldn't have made sense until you actually went through the process. And when I wrote my book and I remember when I was writing mine, I was like, I need to make sure and have everything in there that I had questions about that all these other books didn't talk about. Um, but even in there, there's going to be bits and pieces that are still left out that other people still have questions. So it doesn't matter how many how, it's that on the job training that OJT, like you're not going to learn it until you go through it period. Um, at least for me, you know, my, other people might be like, well, that's not true. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm basing this off my experience. I would have not learned how to close a real estate deal unless I actually forced myself uncomfortably, completely uncomfortable, nervous, anxiety, hated it, but put <laughs> through it. And I got it done. And it, then you become a little bit more comfortable. It's like doing reps. OK, I can't do 225 on bench today, but maybe in two months, if I keep working for it, I might be able to rep out 225 10 times. Who knows? Um, it's it's putting in those reps, getting uncomfortable, which most people that's another thing that uncomfortableness. What if well, if I call this lady and ask her if she wants to sell her house, what if she tells me no? Or if she tells me to go fuck myself, who cares? Yeah, it's going to affect you at the beginning, but that's when you start building callus. Like you start, you know, adding new suits to your armor. Okay. Next time that's just going to ping off of me, you know, because I have right. goals of where I want to close certain amount of deals or whatever, make a certain amount of money. 
and no amount of fuck yous is going to stop me from what I'm going to do because if I get a hundred fuck yous and one yes, then and I make ten grand, then I you can tell me fuck myself all day long. Um, that was a hundred dollars a fuck you that you get, right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so don't with the mindset of it's too late to start. Please get that out of your mind. There's new wholesalers. There's new investors starting every day that are having. Uh, massive success. And you know what? They're just working harder than other people and they have their mind right. They're surrounded by positive people in their network. And, um, you know, if you got family members or you got uh, friends and stuff like that, that are beating you down saying you shouldn't do that, or it sounds like a bad idea, or whenever you have your first failure and they go, Oh, I told you so and cut them people out. I don't care how long they've been in your life. I don't care what relationship you have with them. If it's your spouse or whatever, if they are, telling you that you should not be trying to go for your dreams, your goals, that's toxic stuff. And, um, you know, usually those people are stagnant, right? And, and stagnant water brings, builds toxicity. That's where mosquitoes come from. And I hate those bastards. So I appreciate you saying that, man. Cause that's been one of the, the main topics lately is, uh, one of our guys in our men's group right now is, you know, battling cutting off his own mom, you know, and that's, uh, that's something that we, Shit, that's hard. You know what I mean? But yeah. guess what? You know, sometimes our closest family and friends don't want us to succeed. And that's kind of I'm glad that you said that. You know what I mean? So, well, they want you to do well. They When you start doing better than them, that's where the jealous feelings come through. And I'm not saying that I'm not human. There's somebody that's doing better than me. And I'm, I might get a little jealous or I might go. Eh. But it's just going to make me want to do harder. I'm, I'm very competitive. So I want to be the best. And it's just over principle, just because I want that's what I want. Um, I want to be the best in my market. I want to be the top dog in my market. And as soon as I see some competition coming along, I'm going to figure out a way to get rid of that competition. Not like, you know, out, out of spite or anything or like actively, but I might change some marketing up. I might work a little bit harder, you know, in order to create that gap because I, I want to continue to be that number one brand. Um, but yeah, you know, I've had to cut my dad off so many damn times and, you know, he's, he's a very toxic person. Um, I, you know, I love the guy and everything, but he's one of those, I told you so's, you know, when I was a pro wrestler, when, when I was going well, when I was in, in bigger companies and wrestling gangrel and stuff like that, people that I grew up watching, um, it was, Oh, you're doing so good, son. You're doing great. You're great. You should let me manage you or whatever. <laughs> um, he wanted a piece while you were on the way yeah. up. Exactly. And then as soon as I had a down, well, I told you, I told you. And it's just like, oh, man, if you could only hear yourself. Um, and then same thing happened with real estate. Um, here's here. And I don't mean to keep ranting, but I had gotten all the way up to my bank account, all the way up to 30 grand. I was doing wholesaling. I was about six, seven months in and I had partnered with some people. And these were very, very smart people. Um, one was already a wholesaler. He'd already done about 50 deals. So it was great that I was able to partner with someone educated like him and with experience. And the other guy was a multimillionaire, owned a mortgage company, owned like 100 rentals. So it's like this. Here I am, this very green, naive, but very motivated person. And I see this opportunity to team up with these guys. I'm like, hell yeah, what, what a better you know, it's a blessing from God, you know, for me, I feel like I'm being blessed with this opportunity um, to, to team up with these guys. And it didn't work out. You know, we started. So if we made a $10,000 deal, it got split three ways, but I was still the one on the road. I was still the one doing all the marketing. I was still the one talking to all the sellers, still the one selling the deals. Like I was doing everything and only getting a third of, you know, so it was like I was back at a job. And I remember my, my $30,000 bank account cushion went down to almost nothing. I mean, it, I couldn't believe it happened again. I go, how the hell did I get all the way there? And now I'm down to nothing. And I had to ask my dad for money. And if you've ever been there, and I'm sure a lot of us have, ugh, man, the last thing you want to do is talk about, hey, I'm doing this and that, and then have to go back to him and go, I need your help. And my dad's that type of person. Well, I told you, son, you shouldn't have quit your job. Now your benefits and your insurance and blah, 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 blah. Now, every day, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. But, you know, five years ago when you were telling me that I should have never done this to begin with, that's not what you were saying, you know. And so 
I've had to cut him out of many a times. And, and it's at this point right now of the life where I have let him back in my life, but only because his health issues, you know, I'll feel real bad about myself if my dad passes away or something happens to him and I wasn't there, I'll have regrets. And I don't want to have any regrets when it comes to that. But you do have to cut those people out and you, you, you got to keep them at a distance, you know, arm's length at least. Um, don't tell everybody about your success. I'm very open about the things I'm doing and how, you know, the su successes that I'm running into um, and the opportunity. But you also have a small circle, though. So you're also a person that's just not letting anybody in, too. So it's not like Correct. you're either there and supported you or and we're on this type of friendship basis or you're not. And that's all that. It, you know what I mean? That's what I've noticed with you. you. You don't need new friends. Why no. do you need new friends? You don't need a lot of friends. You need you need people that will have your back regardless if you're doing well or you're doing bad. I've got one guy in my, my group, my circle, that just tells me all the time. You know, he's probably about 10, 15 years older than me. Been doing a lot longer. We've partnered up on quite a few deals now. But he always tells me at least once a month, hey, man, I'm so fucking proud of you. And I'm going, that's shit my dad should be, should be saying to me. But hearing it from him, like, it gives you that good It means feel. more. Yeah. It's like, a stranger that hasn't really known you. Bad. Yep. Yeah. And you know, I that's why I brought, you, I brought you on this podcast, man, because um, I think a lot of people respect you. And I think that men, uh, our self-doubt sometimes gets in the way. So I wanted to showcase, you know, your story and your success and literally how you've overcome that. You know what I mean? Because um, I, I don't want to say that if if you could do it, anybody could do it. But your own words, if you could do it, anybody can do it, you know, and it's very impressive to watch what yeah, you've done. You. No, it, it, it's, it's impressive, bro. It, it, it's it's cool. Like we were talking on the phone a couple of days ago and you're like, bro, I just got a, a brand new 44 storage facility that's given me the opportunity to add on X, Y, Z more. And like, I would say a normal friend would be like, oh, look at you thinking you're Mr. Big Shot. Me, I'm over here like, how the fuck are you going to collect payment on 44 storage? You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. it, it's a different mindset that I have. So like, you yeah, know, most and, of it might give you a thumbs up or a cool, good job. You know, that's that's just kind of throwing it back in your face. Like, hey, at least I responded. But it's different when you get around like minded people. And it's funny because I think if Mr. Robinson, if he's still around, hopefully he is. But if he could see <laughs> us today, we are probably the last two people he would have thought would ever become successful. And, you know, there's a lot of people in that classroom. That, that was our uh, that was our uh, world history teacher, wasn't it? Yeah, or ge yeah, history was it geography or, or geography? Yeah, I don't geography. know that much. <laughs> um, that dude was nuts. Um, talk about someone that's depressing to be around, but you know, um, hopefully, you're still doing all right there, Mr. Robinson. Um, well, Dustin, I'm not going to keep you too long because I know that you have uh houses to flip and things to do like that, but to kind of wrap it up real quick, um how can we support you? How can our audience, is there any courses that you're offering? I think that I saw that you're offering like a wholesale course or something like that, that you've been working on. Um, is there, you know, can you drop the link for your book? Tell them what it is real quick. Just yeah, kind of give yeah. a, a closing for you, how we can support sure. you. And then um, I'll ask how you can support me here momentarily. Yeah. Again. And I want to, I want to thank you for having me on here, bro. Seriously. It's, um, I have a lot of respect for you. I love you. I think you're doing awesome things and you know, you're, you're very good at what you do. Um, and that's, you know, you're just, you're an expert in your field and it's going to, I think eventually, and, and you're, I know you're doing well now, but you're going to re reap those rewards by 10 later down the line. I like guess it's, it's all this work you've put in, all this work that I've put in, whatever, it's just building bigger and better things. Um, but the way you can reach out to me, um, I'm on Facebook, Dustin Ring. Um, I think I've got a page as well. I'm on TikTok. I post a lot of TikTok content. Um, if you're looking to get into wholesale real estate or flicks, fix and flips or just starting in, in real estate investing in general. Um, I do have a book on Amazon. Uh, it's, it's a uh, typo disaster. Um, cause it was written by me, but, um, the, the knowledge is in there. It's called break the mold by Dustin ring. Um, hold on. There you go. It's probably backwards. Maybe not. I don't know, but there it is. Um, it's you good. can find that on Amazon. You can get the digital version for like a buck. Um, I'm not making any money off that stuff, but, um, it like there it's chock full of stuff. I wish I would have known when I was first getting started. 
Um, and then I've also got a coaching course. It's a video course. So if you're really wanting to get into wholesaling and, and just take complete massive action on it, um, if you go to DustinRingCoaching.com, um, you can learn more about that. But it'll teach you the ins and outs, how to get started from level zero to hero. You know, it's basically my blueprint on, you know, not only mind shift stuff, you know, changing your mindset, but actually learning the real estate field and learning how to become a, a real estate investor and and starting from scratch. Because I think most of us, the reason we're in our sales jobs or our situations right now is because we didn't have anything and we wanted something and we're like, okay, well, at least I know I have a pulse and a heartbeat and I can at least use that to propel myself forward. So don't think you have to be some scholar or something like that to make this stuff happen. There's some pretty stupid people out there, including myself that are very successful um, with this strategy and, and real estate investing in general. Um, so yeah, on TikTok, Instagram as well, just, uh, but mostly I'm on Facebook. So if you just hit me up on Facebook, shoot me a friend request or, a follow. Hey man, I, I appreciate that. And then um, I guess to to finalize the question, this is Above the Clouds podcast with Jay Bird, sponsored by Cross Country Wellness. Me being the owner, founder, CEO of Cross Country Wellness. Um, what is, and this would be like the final final goodbye, but um, what would be the uh, a way that wellness in some sort of fashion has helped you in your career overcome, you know, pain, sleep, anxiety, inflammation. All right. You've, you've, you've dealt with some of those in some sort of fashion. And I know that you've tried my products before too. So, sure. um, unbiasedly yeah, tell the people, cause he sent me a bottle of some stuff that you take at night and it's gone. It was gone in like three days. So, uh, but yeah, you know, I'm a I am an avid connoisseur of the um, of the botanical arts. I don't know how you would say that. Holistic <laughs> uh, medicine. There you go. Um, but yeah, um, you know, I don't take it. Sorry, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Bless you. <coughs> sorry, guys. Um, I am. Um, I used to be on antidepressants a lot. I was on Celexa or whatever it's called, and it helped out a bit. But um, mostly, I just use. Um, what God's given to us, you know, however I do it, you know, whether it's pill form or whatever, but um, I'm not afraid to say that um, it's, it, it gives, it makes me wake up and it just, it changes my mindset, you know, cause um, I, I, I don't know. I could go into all of that stuff, but we all have a vice bro. And you know, like, I feel like that the one thing that actually made me catapult into this industry was because of that. You know what I mean? Um, well, we I subconsciously we knew that it, sorry. No, you're good. Go ahead. I, was say, I remember when you first started talking about it on Facebook in like 2008 or nine. And I remember your family would comment like, Jordan, why are you posting this stuff and this and that? And I don't know if you remember that, but um, and then they didn't realize that it was become going to become a business model and you're going to be having fine success with it. Um, I'm sure they're seeing a different tune now, but, you know, that, that's really I think that that's probably one of the coolest things that I think that has come to. I would say that I've manifested, I would say is that I've always loved cannabis in such a way that I've created a career in it. And here I am, all these brands behind me, you know, like I can personally go to some of these people directly. I've toured some of their facilities. These people right here, I know, you know, I know exactly who the owner of the company is, the general manager, the brand ambassador. I know them by first name basis. So like, you know, the lady walking across right in front of me right now, she's they're they're customers of mine. They are allowing me this space for free. So shout out awesome. new and everybody here. Um, shout out to Dustin. Dustin buys houses, um, man. Just thank you for being on here. Thank you for being my thank second you, guest. Thank you for helping me figure out the uh, the ins and outs of this thing. It's going to be probably cooler longer down the road. So we'll have you back on again when production's a little bit better. But, you know, Amen. my goal my goal is to keep pumping these things out and uh, just having some, I want to, I want to provide value. So thank you for coming on here and providing uh, massive action and value yeah. to people, bro. It's a, uh, it means a lot to me. Sure. Appreciate it. So, Hey man, have a blessed day. If y'all need Dustin, y'all go check him out. Other than that, cross country wellness above the clouds with Jaybird. We out here, baby. Peace. Peace.